And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review. Hey everybody, it's Ryan Metzler, and today I'm here with something a little bit different. Today we're going to be taking a preview look at a game coming out from Tasty Minstrel Games. And this is going to be a game that's going to be on Kickstarter, and it's called For the Win. Uh, this is going to be a two-player abstract game in which players control different types of pieces. There are zombies, ninjas, pirates, monkeys, and aliens, and you're going to control all of these different types of pieces, all of which are going to have different abilities. You'll be placing out your pieces, trying to get them into a, a grouped area where you have at least one of each of your five different types of pieces touching and active at the same time, and then whoever manages to accomplish this first by using their actions most, most appropriately and in the right order is going to win. So why don't we take a real quick look at how the game plays. I'll give you a look at the components, and remember these are preview components. These are not final quality components. And then I'll give you my final thoughts on the game, and you can determine whether, you, whether or not you're interested in getting the game for yourself. So here you can see all of the components of For the Win. You have these player sheets here, which tell you what all of the pieces are going to do, as well as count your actions, and each player is going to have five actions per round. After a round, the play is going to switch to the other player. And as it is, you can use either one or two moves on your turn, one or two actions. Uh, you would mark those thusly. And when you got to five, you would be done, and the other player would finish out their actions. The pieces are, as you see from left to right, Ninja, Pirate, Monkey, Zombie, and Alien. Available in two different colors. You have yellow and black here. Uh, and there's going to be two of each type of piece. The objective is to get five of these pieces, all five of these pieces, each different type, in a connection pattern on the board so that all of them are touching and active at the same time. Now by active, I mean that if they use their abilities on their turn, and I'll go over their abilities shortly, they're going to flip over to the opposite side, and you can see here there's an X on them. And this is the inactive or used side of a piece. You need all five of these different pieces to be touching either orthogonally or diagonally in a pattern and active in order to win the game. Now that I've given you that brief overview, let's take a look at the individual pieces and what they do. These are the monkey pieces, and these are going to be the pieces that always start out on the table for each game. Each player will have one monkey on the board, and the base game rules say that the monkeys start adjacent as such to begin the game. Now the players may choose to have them start diagonally adjacent, which would be a variant that you can choose to do if both players agree at the beginning of the game. The ability of the monkey is going to allow it to be flipped in order to flip any adjacent tiles over. So for example, this monkey, the yellow player's monkey, could flip over to its opposite side using its ability in order to flip all adjacent tiles, both orthogonal and diagonal. So this monkey, the alien, and the pirate would all flip over, and the black player would have no active pieces on the board. These are the ninja pieces. By using the ninja pieces ability, you may move one ninja tile to any other position on the board. So for example, I could move the black ninja in between these other two pieces over here. In doing so, it flips to its inactive side. Next, we have the pirate pieces. The pirate piece has what's called the cannon ability, which allows it to shoot any adjacent tile, for example, either this monkey or this monkey, to a different location. It can't shoot this monkey as it would break up the tile formation, but it could shoot this monkey moving it to anywhere else on the board, for example over next to the alien. This would flip over the pirate tile. Here we have the zombie pieces. The zombie tile ability will allow you to change any one adjacent tile into another zombie, either of your own color or your opponent's color. So for example, this player could use their zombie in order to change this adjacent ninja into one of their own zombies, placing it onto the board. Alternatively, they could have changed that piece into one of their opponent's zombies, just replacing the ninja with a zombie. If, like in this scenario, all of the zombies are already on the board, you may use any zombie's ability to simply inactivate any adjacent tile. So for example, this player could use their zombie to inactivate Black's monkey. Finally, we have the alien pieces. The ability of the alien allows you to pull any one piece on the board next to your alien for flipping the alien tile over. So for example, I could use my alien's ability, flipping him over, to pull this zombie tile and place it anywhere adjacent to my alien. So to play the game, players, as I said, are going to start with one monkey each in the center of the table. And on a player's turn, they may take either one or two actions. Uh, and your actions are going to be several different things. They may add a tile to the board. So for example, if black is the first player, they could add a tile to the board. 
they may only add tiles in places not adjacent to their own tiles. So for example, if they wanted to add this pirate, they could add it diagonally adjacent to this monkey, but could not place it adjacent to the monkey orthogonally because it would be touching the other monkey and adjacent to their own piece. So they could place a new piece out onto the board as such. When they take this action, they would then move their marker up one on the space and they would have used one of their five actions for the round. If they wanted to take another action, they may then do so. And their second action could be, for example, to move a tile one space. So if they wanted to move this tile, they could simply move it up one space next to the monkey. So now that it is adjacent to their own monkey and the opposing player's monkey. And that would be their second action. It would then be the other player's turn, and they would have their own sheet to mark their actions, uh, but then they would be able to take up to one or two actions in their turn. They would probably first place a tile out onto the board, using one of their actions, so they would mark that likewise on their scoring sheet to show that they've taken an action. But they could, for example, shove tiles. So let's say that the scenario was as such, and they decided to shove a tile. What they would then do is move this tile, shoving a tile in that direction and it would push all tiles behind it in the same direction. The only rule here is that you're never allowed to break up the formation, so you couldn't move it so that these pieces were disconnected. You can move them so that they're disconnected in one move, but they must be connected by the end of your turn. A fourth option on your turn would be to use one of your abilities of one of your tiles. So for example, if the yellow player wanted to use the ability of their monkey to flip it over, they would then flip over all of the other adjacent tiles, because that's the monkey's ability, and mark that as their second action for the turn. The final option on your turn is to flip one of your tiles face up. So for example, you could simply flip up your pirate here and count that as an action. The game will go on and each turn players will be able to take either one or two actions dependent on what they choose uh, until each player has used all five of their actions, at which point you'll go to a new round and the start player will change. <clears throat> so to illustrate the end game of For the Win, I have set up a scenario where the black player is now on their turn and they have two actions left and they are set up in a situation where they can win by connecting five of their pieces that are currently active. You'll note that they actually have connected four different pieces, but that only two of them are active. The pirate and the ninja are inactive, and they need to get a zombie over into their connected area and have all of those pieces active. And they can do this in two moves. For example, they could start their turn by using this extra monkey that they have, flipping it over and flipping all of the adjacent pieces. So this pirate and this ninja would flip, as would the opponent's monkey, and you would flip the pirate up top and the used alien from the opposing player. And that would be their first move for the turn, leaving the board in this situation. Now, they're still in the problem. They have a monkey, a pirate, an alien, and a ninja connected, but they're missing the zombie. But this is okay because they have an extra alien connected to their area. And what they can do is use this extra alien's ability to pull the zombie from across the board over into their area next to the used alien. This would create a scenario where all five of their different pieces are touching and black would win the game. So that's For the Win, a two-player abstract game by Tasty Minstrel Games and one that is currently on Kickstarter looking for funding. If it reaches the appropriate funding level it will be published and you can be in the first wave of people to receive the game. Now, I got the game and immediately sat down and played five games of it in a row, and that's because I really enjoyed the style of the game. It's got that nice two-player uh, hive-type abstract feel where you're placing tiles, and you're trying to combine them in a pattern that lets you win the game. Now, this adds the bonus of giving special actions. Uh, different pieces perform different things, and it combines everybody's favorite different uh, memes, kind of, into one game. You have your pirates and your aliens and your ninjas and your zombies, and who doesn't love all of those things? Uh, so if you're looking for a great new abstract, one that you can give uh, funding to for a smaller company looking to put out a game, I would definitely suggest taking a look at For the Win. It's a great game and one that I think will be immensely popular once it is eventually released.